Hi, I'm Jesse Davis. I am a Python and C programmer at MongoDB. I want to talk to you today about async testing. So these days, async is very popular. It's optimized for the kind of sites that have a large number of concurrent connections, but not much is happening on each of them. So a good example of the kind of website for which async is optimized is Gmail. When your browser opens a connection to Gmail, it holds that WebSocket open and it doesn't actually do anything on it until something happens, like you decide that it's time to send an email. So normally connections are held open and there's no processing going on on each. And so to allocate a thread per connection would be extremely inefficient for an application like that. So that's the kind of thing that async is optimized for. And async is extremely popular these days because websites like that are becoming more and more common. But if you're writing an async application or you plan to, you're going to need to test it. And testing async apps is a whole new video game. I tend to think of unit testing rather a lot like a video game. It's got the same sort of extremely satisfying cycle of effort and reward. You're, you write a test, the test is broken, and then you fix the test or your code, most likely both, and then the test passes and frameworks like Tox will give you a green success message with, it says congratulations, and it shows exclamation points and a smiley face, and you feel great, and then you go on to the next level. So today we're going to play a new video game called Async Testing. And Async testing, you have to learn the controls all over again. You have to start from scratch. So for this game, I'm going to choose Toad, because in Super Mario Brothers 2, he was always my favorite. So for our async testing example, let's say that we're implementing an application like Gmail. Gmail has this delayed email send feature that you can turn on where you hit send on your email, but it doesn't actually send it for a few seconds. It gives you the opportunity to think better of what you were going to send. The email was too angry or you forgot an attachment, most likely both. And if you hit undo in time, then the email reverts to being a draft and you can tone down your anger or add the attachment that you forgot and try sending it again. There's this special clarity of thought that I experience right after I've hit the send button on an email. And this feature takes advantage of that moment of clarity to give you the opportunity to take it back. So if we're going to implement a feature like that, then we need a function that can delay for a few seconds before it does something and we need that function to be asynchronous. So that's what we're going to test, and that's going to be the first level of our testing video game. So if you recall, the boss at the end of the first level of Super Mario Brothers 2 was this bizarre thing called Birdo, which shot eggs from her mouth at you which suggests that Japanese video game designers of 1988 didn't know a lot about how birds worked or about eggs. So we're going to try to defeat Birdo by writing a test of our async delay function. So to begin with, let's show how to test just a standard delay function that's blocking. So you would use pi, uh, oh, by the way, this is PyCharm. This is my favorite IDE. I spend five 
eight hours a day using PyCharm these days when I'm writing Python. So to test our blocking delay function, we would use Python standard unit test framework and the test case. And we would simply write down the time that we start, and then we'd call delay with a one second argument, write down how long it took, and assert that that duration was about one. And if we open the Python shell here, and we do unit test delay zero, so that's this file, it takes about a second to run, it passes, and if we tell it to delay for two seconds instead, then it will spend two seconds and it will fail because two is not close enough to one. Great. Now, what about async? How would we test that? So our async delay function, it can't block, so it has to take a callback. And this callback, it needs to execute about a second after we first call delay async. So how are we going to do that? What do we need to put here in the callback argument? Well, we could write a function that tests what time it is, compares that to the start time, and asserts that that's about a second later. So I've got that here, where I declare a function called done and it figures out how long it's been since the start time and then it tests that that is about a second. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start to implement an async testing methodology. We're going to use Tornado as our async framework of choice for implementing and testing this delay async function and by the end, uh, it's going to take about five steps. We'll finally have re-implemented a lot of what Tornado actually gives us for testing async code. And then I'll show how actually using what Tornado provides to us gives us this convenient, reliable, straightforward way of testing async code that you can use to bring your async code up to the same standards of reliability and um, thorough testing as your traditional synchronous code has. So we've got this done callback. Let's see how it does. Fantastic, right? Our function has passed. But do you see anything wrong by chance? It's funny that it took only a millisecond to complete, right? It's nearly instant. Um, so maybe we can explore this a little further. What if we delay for two seconds? Well, we've got two problems now. It still only takes a millisecond to run, and it passes even though it shouldn't have. So clearly we've got a problem here. And because of this misstep, Birdo gets a hit on us. The way the game worked was that she shot eggs at us and we would lose a health point or something whenever we get hit. So we have a problem. How do we fix it? The problem is that we aren't starting and stopping the event loop correctly. So let's look at the next version of this file. In the next version, we import IO loop from Tornado. And we get a reference to the global loop. And what we need to do is we need to start our callback. We need to schedule it for a second in the future and then start the I.O. loop. So this allows us to wait for the callback to be executed before the test method as a whole exits. And then in our done callback, once we've been begun, one second delay after we were first scheduled, we can 
test that the duration was what we expected, and then we stop the loop. And stopping the loop, maybe counterintuitively, has the effect of making start complete. And so our function as a whole can now exit. So if we run this delay 3 version, we can see that it takes a second now, not just a millisecond, and it passes. So that's fantastic. And that lets us get our first hit on Birdo. The way this worked in the video game was that you, uh, you would dodge the eggs that she shot at you, and then you would pick them up and throw them back at her, and that would knock her health down into, until you could defeat her. So we've s learned how to start and stop the loop, and that was our first success. So that's great. And let's just uh, verify here that if we delay for two seconds that our test will fail as we expect. So great. So it took about two seconds, and um, the we got an assertion error because two is not close enough to one. Uh, hmm. But let me see. There's sort of a problem here. Um, I'm not getting my terminal prompt back. I'm hitting enter here, but my prompt isn't showing up. So that's a little weird. I also noticed that uh, it's not actually the unit test framework that's printing out the error. I don't have this long line at the bottom. Instead, it's actually the tornado application logger that's printing this traceback. And now I'm stuck. So I have to hit control C, get a keyboard interrupt. And I notice here that I was still in start in the IO loop method start at the time that I hit control C. So it looks to me like this is what happened. When this assert almost equal failed, it raised an exception. And because it raised an exception, it actually exited the callback before it had an opportunity to call stop. So that's a huge problem. And that means that Birdo gets another hit on me, because the test hangs. So now I lose another health point, and oh man, now I'm, I'm really in trouble, because I only have one health point left, and I need to hit Birdo twice more, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make a test that's going to both succeed and fail when expected without hanging this whole suite. That's a real mess. And the answer here, it's a little bit complicated. So let me show it to you. This is, we're another step on our journey towards re-implementing Tornado's own test framework. What we're gonna do here is, we need to register an exception handler that will catch the exception when assert almost equal fails. And that way we can stop the loop. So I'll show you here first the exception handler. It takes the exception type, value, and traceback. And it stops the loop. So we've got now two places where the loop can stop. If the test passes, then we stop the loop after the assert. If the, f if the test fails, then we get an exception handler called, and that'll stop the loop as well. So whichever way the assert turns out, we'll still stop the loop. The other thing we need to do is we need to write down that the exception occurred so that we can make sure that the test fails informatively. So we'll make a place to test to, to save this exception called self.failure. So this is an attribute of the test case. And at first we set it to none. And if the exception handler is executed, it stores the exception's value as self.failure. Now we need to register this exception handler and for that we use this tornado magic thing called the exception stack context. 
And this is very complex, its implementation. But essentially, what you need to know about it is that if you begin a chain of callbacks within the exception stack context, then the callback and any callbacks that it schedules will all execute this exception handler if they throw. So with this thing installed, we can now execute our callback and start the loop. And finally, once the loop has been stopped, we'll pop out here, we'll see if a failure has been written down, and if so, we'll re-raise it. So this is called delay four, and we're going to execute it down here. So first we'll see it passes, it takes about a second, and more importantly, if we make it fail, you'll see that it fails, and it fails in the unit testy way, where the unit test framework writes it down and returns us to our command prompt. So that's awesome, and we get our penultimate hit on Birdo because now we know how to handle test failures. But we're not totally out of the woods yet. Let's take a look at the sum of this output. It's kind of a big mess. I started the unit test up here, and when it failed, Tornado logged the trace back here. So you see the assertion error fails down here. And then the unit test framework, which captures the output, prints it all out again. So that's kind of a big mess, and if you were in the middle of debugging a bunch of test failures, this would be very hard to read, because they'd be spat all over your terminal and be very hard to figure out what was what. So the way to deal with this now is to just add one line to our exception handler, which is return true. And returning true tells Tornado that we have handled this exception and you shouldn't propagate it. So I'm going to run it again and it will fail again. It takes two seconds, but now you'll see that the traceback is only written out once. So we've got a nice traceback now and that gives us our final hit on Birdo. So now we're in awesome shape. We've defeated the boss of the first level. We figured out how to do async testing. And when we kill Birdo, she drops a power up. And what the power up is, is Tornado's async test case built in testing feature. And I can show you how awesome this is we can delete a whole bunch of lines if we just use Tornado's own testing framework. So we'll import it here from Tornado testing import async test case. So instead of, uh, instead of inheriting from the standard unit test test case, we're now inheriting from Tornado's async test case that comes with the Tornado framework. Now, the async test case creates and uh, reinitiates an IO loop for us. So we don't need that IO loop. And it has shortcuts self.wait to start the loop and wait for it to be completed, and then self.stop to end it. The other really neat thing is that when Tornado creates that loop for you in async test case, it registers an exception handler that will stop the loop for us. So we no longer need to install one. We don't need to write down the failure, and we don't need to re-raise it at the end. So we can get rid of all of these imports. Boom. And you'll see one of my favorite features of PyCharm here is that it shows you unused imports by graying them out. So, so far so good. 
and uh, what else can we get rid of here? Well, if done calls stop, what if we just make self stop the callback? And then, maybe I should have done this before, we can just do this test down here at the bottom. So we can just, instead of testing how long it took before the callback was executed, we can assume that the callback stops the loop, and we can just see how long the loop was running, and that'll be close enough. So if we run this again, we'll see that it takes a second. Oh. It takes a second, and it passes. And, as we just saw a second ago, because I forgot to update this code, we can run it again, and it fails. Stop here returns true. So, or rather the exception handler that async test case registered returns true. So once again, we don't have the extra traceback logged, and we get our command prompt back as soon as the test fails. So, now we've beat Birdo, and we're ready to go on to the next level, which is async testing with coroutines. I don't have time to talk about that today, but if you follow the link to my blog, then you'll see a write-up of this level of the talk as well as the next level, and links for much further learning. So if you're writing async code because you're a hip modern developer, and you want to learn how to test this code as thoroughly, as conveniently, as reliably as you're used to testing your synchronous code, then Tornado provides you with the tools that you need in order to do that. And it's fairly easy to learn. So async testing, it's just as satisfying, it's just as cool as the old style of testing, but it's a whole new video game. And I hope you learned how to use it, and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did.